Yep, always. <laughs> Wonderful. So you're about to launch your new book, The Wines of Santorini. And so I want you to give us the 101. <laughs> I want you to give us the 101 on Santorini in terms of terroir, grape varieties. You know, what is the essential information that people need to know about Santorini's wines? The essential information, go visit the place. It's amazing. It's a unique combination of breathtaking beauty. You know, an island, a top destination for holidays and we have 20 fantastic wineries there were six wineries in 1989 so you can see a lot of progress and the, the key the key facts about santorini is uh, okay first of all the vines are very very old how old they can be 200 years old or 300 years old we don't really know we're talking about the Jurassic park of vines actually you have a continuous viticulture for more than 34 centuries. You have a variety called Assyrtic, which is very, very powerful and has a unique combination of high alcohol while retaining high acidity. I think it's a very unique variety. What else? Ah, you have a, a, a basket trained system called Kulura. This is very special and people train the vines in a basket to protect from, from the very, very fierce winds. And also, it creates a humid microclimate because, as you expect, the climate in Santorini is very arid. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Ah, and all this planted on the slopes of one of the most aggressive and violent volcanoes in the story in, in the in the world story huh? is it a risk the volcano is it still active? it is active it is active the last the last uh, eruption was in the 50s okay so it's sleeping <laughs> so you know people talk about the uniqueness of other other regions so if you go there ah the hills very very low so the average is 25 hectoliters per hectare but they were uh, vintages like 2019 that we had five hectoliters per hectare because of the winds so we're talking about very rare uh, wines but it's not only the rarity it's the the quality that goes hand by hand so the wines are looking fantastically and you get um, single vineyards you have late releases some with oak, some with some fora. There are a lot of things going on. Excellent. And what is Ezertico for someone who hasn't tried? So, you know, high acidity, high alcohol. But what else do you expect from a Santorini Ezertico? Ezertico is... Um, Ezertico Santorini is um, lemons and um, salt. Excellent. Rocks and salt. So it's very salty. Uh, it's uh, phenolic. It's a white wine that behaves like a red wine. So decant it, give it a big glass like this one. It transforms something amazing. Fabulous. And how old can you drink a Sertico? Kind of, can you have old vintages? Yeah, my suggestion is to, to drink the wines after their third year following the harvest. And you can keep them for minimum 10 years, depending on the producer, the vintage and the style of the wine. Fabulous. And is there anything beyond Desertico in Santorini? Yeah, uh, beyond Desertico, yes, of course there is. You have uh, initially there were, I think, 62 varieties recorded uh, in the previous century. Now you have uh, Asertico, you have Aidani, another white floral variety. You have uh, Mavrotragano and Mandelaria, and some other rare varieties producing unicorn wines. <laughs> Excellent. I love the term of thought of unicorn wines. Most Greek wines must be kind of unicorn Yes, but wines. <laughs> if you have one producer making this variety in Greece, it's totally a unicorn. Like Gavalas, Gavalas is making a Katsanoga Iduria, which is a fantastic wine, yeah. Fabulous. And you've just launched last year your top 50 wines of Greece. Can yeah. you tell me a bit, I mean, about the competition and also what your other kind of highlights in terms of regions or varieties are for Greece? Okay, how many questions were there? Uh, too many, uh, way too many. Okay, well, no worries. <laughs> Synopsis of the competition and any highlights that people yeah. should look for. Yeah, we call it 50 great Greek wines. And I think uh, it's something new. It's something that we need. Greek wines uh, 
progresses and we all need new things to evolve. So this is what 50 Great Greek Wines is, it's a new platform. I don't call it a competition, it's a blind tasting and it's a platform. We, do, we, we try to do a lot of things and a part of this is the blind tasting. So only 50 wines get an award and these are announced. We buy the wines from the market, so everything starts from the, the same point. Um, we try to have only top judges, most of them were from uh, UK, Masters of Wine, Masters Sommelier, people that you know are infected with the Greek virus in a good way, <laughs> so they know about Greek wine, then they can understand the dynamics and the, uh, and the uh, individuality of the Greek varieties. We try to do stuff after the uh, award ceremony, so we start. We are starting working after the awards, and it's a new thing. I I can see uh, an opportunity there for Greek wine. So by promoting the 50 great Greek wines, uh, it it will work for the whole Greek wine. So this is the idea behind that, Excellent. and I'm looking forward for the second edition, hopefully in early 2022. And what were some of your highlights from this edition? Is there any other kind of variety or region that is just producing outstanding wines that people should take note of? Yes, I think we saw some uh, surprises. For example, we saw a wine from Lignon, an ancient variety from Northern Greece. I remember that that was a, a big surprise. And we had um, another very rare variety from Ahia called Santa Mariana, so, and, by, and stuff from biodynamic uh, producers. So there were a little bit of everything old, and new stuff and this is Greek wine we're going a step further by looking at our heritage and our, at our tradition fantastic <laughs>